Welcome to this episode of Just One Thing. Today I'm going to talk to you about Windows Azure Connect. My name is Adam Gerholsky and I am a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. So in a nutshell, uh, Windows Azure Connect was built out to solve a problem facing many enterprises when they look at moving to the cloud. It's Typically for them, it's not an all or nothing response. Um, each of us has or have been associated with businesses that have a large uh, built up infrastructure, uh, maybe data centers uh, in, in your city, around the country, around the world. You're not just simply going to shutter those down, turn the lights off and just say, here's everything, put it in the cloud. Uh, what you want to do is maximize the everything you can out of those investments if those hardware if hardware is just purchased and it has a ways to go before it's recycled you want to make sure you you get the most out of that before getting rid of it um, Azure Connect can help by basically enabling you to maybe spin up more instances of the service you have running on premise in the cloud and load balance between the two but that's not the only case um, for uh, for Azure Connect. Another one, a uh, common one, is SQL Server. Currently, SQL Azure has a 50 gig limit. Um, there are ways around it in terms of database designs, such as sharding. However, maybe your applications aren't built for that yet, um, but the app itself could be in the cloud. You could use Windows Azure Connect to connect back to those SQL Server databases that are on-premise. This is also a, a good option for organizations that may not um, be able to store their data in the cloud due to various compliance reasons. They could certainly run the compute power in the cloud, but data needs to be on-prem. This enables that. Third, um, we have big uh, network infrastructure. Um, you've got a lot of network admins. Um, you, you know how um, you need to control access to those resources. You can in Windows Azure, you can obviously set up local users and permissions and accounts. Um, but a benefit here with Connect is that it allows network administrators to treat those Azure resources as part of their own as part of their own domain. When a role starts up or an instance starts up, I should say, it can actually be joined to the domain. Network policy can be applied so that way I can use my domain credentials to try and remote access the machine. Um, and if I don't have permissions, it would be denied. A setup, very simple. As we'll see, management is very simple as well. Um, in terms of how it actually works, um, you have to enable your Windows Azure roles for connectivity through its service model. You have to say, hey, this role is going to use Windows Azure Connect. Currently, uh, to have local machines, so machines on premise, um, open up for connectivity to the cloud, you have to install a Windows Azure Connect agent. Um, there are plans to possibly make that go away, but right now you do need a very small agent installed. Um, network policy, so which instances can talk to which machines on-prem, that's all managed through the portal. It gives you really granular control over, you know, maybe my web services can only talk to the database server, but um, maybe I have a worker role that can actually out, you know, access a network file system. Um, and what happens for you automatically is that you know IP level network gets created for you, so it can tunnel any firewalls, NATs you may have, and of course it's secure via end-to-end -end IPsec, and it gives you uh, DNS name resolution as well. So in, in short, it's a great way to connect your on-premise, your existing on-premise resources with maybe new services uh, and offerings you have up in the cloud. So let's. Stop with that and actually take a look at how to go and configure Windows Azure Connect. So before I can configure my web roles uh, to work with Windows Azure Connect, there's actually a couple things I need to do, and I can do those in the Azure Management Portal. Um, if you're not part of, if you don't have Windows Azure Connect uh, available to you, it's under the beta programs. So if you don't uh, see it in your list, you can certainly go through and uh, apply for it here. Um, but you'll notice here I have a virtual network tab. If I click on that, I see Connect at the very top. So th there are two things I need to do. First, I need to install a local endpoint. This is the endpoint running on my machine that will enable... Uh, the cloud to connect to me. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have an application running in the cloud that will pull data from a SQL Express database running on my laptop. So when I, I need to install that local endpoint 
And what you want to do is copy this link to the clipboard, paste it into a browser window, and run the installer. You can't save it locally. It will not work. So you need to run this installer directly um, after you put this link in the browser. Now, I've already gone through the install. And what will happen is, you'll see here there's a little connect icon. It tells me I'm connected. But if I open this, I can see, okay, it's configured to connect and can connect to other resources in Windows Azure Connect. And I can also, if I'm running into issues, there's a diagnostics option here. Close that. And it just makes sure my policies in place, IPv6, IPsec, RAS, it, all of that is set up. If there are any issues, you'll see them here. So if you're having problems connecting, definitely check these local diagnostics first. All right, once you have the endpoint installed, uh, the next thing you need to do is get your role configured to use Connect. To do so, you need an activation token, which is available here. If I click Get Activation Token, it'll provide one for me, and you'll want to actually copy this to the clipboard because we're going to need it in Visual Studio. So I'll copy that to the clipboard, click OK, and we'll actually come back here in a minute. Let's go into Visual Studio. So I just set up a basic Windows Azure project with a, a simple web role. We don't really care what it does. I have something deployed out in the cloud that we'll actually take a look at. But to enable Connect, it's really quite simple. Uh, I go into the properties for the web role, and the last option is Virtual Network. And all I need to do is activate Windows Azure Connect and paste in that token. Now once I've done that, at this point I can publish, and this will be configured to connect um, or it'll be able to connect. There's still another step we'll need to go through. But that's all you need to do uh, for each role you want to be able to work um, or have access to Windows Azure Connect. So, uh, as I said, I've already published something out to the cloud that is enrolled, uh, that is using Windows Azure Connect. You'll see here, here's my instance. Now, the one thing I need to do is that while I have the Connect agent running on my on my laptop here, and it's obviously uh, running on this instance in the cloud. Right now, they by default, they cannot talk to each other. I need to set up some rules to allow that to happen, and I do that through the concept of groups. So you'll see I have a SQL, I'm calling it SQL group setup here. If I click edit group, you'll see I've added my local endpoint, uh, connect from, so that's my laptop. Allow connections between endpoints in the group, this will allow them to talk to each other. And then I need to add something from Azure. So I'll select my web role, I'll click OK, and I'll click Save. And what this is doing is it's updating the policy in my Windows Azure instances, my my or the instances for that web role, to let them know that, hey, you can now talk to this machine. So this can take a minute or two. So all right, the group is updated successfully, but that's not all. Uh, once that happens, what you'll also notice is um, uh, this just switched to updating. So while that happens, I'm going to actually open my database. So I do have this database running uh, on-premise, and on-premise in this case happens to be my laptop. And it's just running SQL Express. So we'll pull the database up, and I just want to do this just to prove that it works. So .SQL Express, connect, I have a little demo database here. Let's we'll just pull the customers up. There we go, demo DB. And we'll edit the tables. Wait for that to come up. There it is. All right, so we'll kind of we'll play around with that in a minute. Meanwhile, we're going to wait for this to update. Um, you'll notice here, um, we'll do a couple things. We'll actually remote in to see what's going on. So my policy here is good. Uh, my local machine. Uh, if if you're not able to connect, you'll see this um, little Windows Azure Connect. The, the icon in your tray will actually uh, get a red X on it to let you know that there's a problem. So right now, uh, and one of the things with Azure Connect 2, um, when you install this local agent, you may have to reboot your machine. Um, so ju just be aware of that. Uh, once you install it, you will more than likely need to do a reboot in order to uh, get it to take effect. So here we go. The role was updated. We're just waiting for uh, final confirmation here and get it uh, into a ready status. And then we will go in and take a look at what happened.
Okay, and there we go. So now we are uh, good to go. So let's re let's remote into this box and take a look at what we've got. Yes. So you'll notice here in the tray, there's a connect agent here, and that is actually the same, so it is connected as well. Um, and it's connected because we've got the group set up. So now let's open IIS. I'm going to do this uh, as I'm remoted in. That way you'll know I'm not really connected to my own machine. Don't want to make you think there's any kind of man behind the curtains, as it were. So we'll just browse to this. Give that a minute to load up here. Now keep in mind this is running in the cloud and it's reaching down to my... Oh, okay, this, this will happen every now and then. Um, sometimes the, the initial time it establishes that connection, it's slow, and that's more than likely due to the fact that I'm kind of running on a, on a cable provider on a wireless network on my laptop. So here we go. So I'm actually pulling that data from my database. So let, let's uh, let's just prove it here. So here's Anderson. Let's say, oh, you know, we really need to change that. That's spelled incorrectly. It's Tom Anderson. So that's saved. And now let's go back in here and refresh our data. I'll refresh the page. And there it went to Tom Anderson. So as you can see, Windows Azure Connect, a really powerful uh, way, really something to start thinking about for your Azure applications. Um, if you can't move everything to the cloud, Azure Connect, great way, really simple to configure to start helping you bridge the gap between the cloud and what you already have on-prem. So just a couple parting thoughts on Windows Azure Connect. As you can see, it's very easy to set up, uh, configure, and administer, so it's a, a very good way. Uh, to help your Azure applications use on-premise resources and vice versa. Uh, keep in mind right now it is in a public CTP, so it, it, they are not production bits. Pricing has not been announced yet, um, so a couple things to keep in mind, but the plans are to ship it. Um, I've heard anything from sometime a uh, fourth quarter to sometime, you know, by the end of 2012. So pretty broad range, but there's definitely um, a lot of importance to this particular feature of Azure as it's going to help uh, a number of organizations make that uh, transition to Azure. And that is it for today.